85% of the world's retail transactions are cash and check. Only 15% are electronic. And everybody focuses on the 15 and the scrap for market share in the 15. And that's important. You must focus on that. But you've got to remember there's 85% out there. And by the way, in the US, that number is 50% cash and check. And in Germany, it's 78%. And in Japan, it's 80%. So this is not a developed world, developing world thing. This is cash is still king for various reasons, good and bad. And I'm a believer that actually there's more bad than good on the cost of cash. And I could go into that for as long as you like. But the idea is that, that I think there's a huge opportunity in this industry. So it's actually not a mature industry. It's got a great opportunity. And the example in Nigeria that the Dean was describing was an example of getting financial inclusion to be part of this change. There's 2.5 billion people in the world who do not have what you and I take for granted, a bank account, an identity, a card, things that you think just work. You just go online and you want to order a, you know, food from Kin Kao or from anybody and it comes. Well, it doesn't work that way for these people. And so their lives are different. And that's got to change because non-inclusive growth will destroy the feeling that I'm talking about of prosperity and growth in the US as well. The US, by the way, has 40 million people who do not have a proper bank account, just to be clear. This is again not a developing world issue. Developed Europe has 93 million people who do not have a bank account. And so there is an enormous opportunity to get people an identity and the self-respect that an identity brings and add that to electronic payments and take out the victimization that only the poor feel by not having that access. Cash is the friend of the, poor, of the rich man, not of the poor man. Because it's the rich man who uses cash to suit their needs, not pay the correct taxes in many countries, uh, indulge in the kinds of things that only cash can provide you the chance to do. And that's a misconception that exists in society for a long time. So I'm a big believer that there's a huge runway in this industry of growth. And the question is, are you gonna focus all your attention on the 15% or on the 85% as well as the 15? You don't pay attention to the 15, you don't get to fly out to places like this and speak to people like you. But if you don't pay attention to the 85, it won't be a great company 10 years from now. And that's the simplicity of our vision. Our vision is a world beyond cash. That's what I'm focused on. That's what the company's focused on. Every one of our employees, if you ask them, what's the strategy of this company? It is to get to a world beyond cash. And that's as simple as it is. Once you get that, how do you compete with everybody else? Well, I'm not sure they have the same perspective. So that gives me space to play. Hence the Nigeria example. South Africa, where your dean comes from originally, we've actually gone and given every South African who gets social security payments an identity with a card issued by the government with biometrics on it, where the money can be given to them every week without somebody getting in the middle. There's an estimate that 42% of the money that goes from a government to an individual through social programs gets stolen along the way. 42%. And the World Food Program loses 40% of the food that it takes from farmers here to distribute to refugees. You can change all that if you do it smart. So how do you compete in the 15%? There you compete with things like technology, which we're investing a great deal of money and effort on. You compete with data. You compete with a good differentiated product, differentiated analytics with consumers. That's how you compete in that. And that I'm comfortable competing in. It's the 85 that is a big opportunity. So with that 85%, does that make you allies with your competitors and making the, helping these 85% become banks? Uh, competitors that exist today, as well as new ones that are constantly being formed by young people like you who want to go and find a way to disintermediate us tomorrow, and that's a good thing. Because if you think about producing new technology, it's not just the, don't focus on the disintermediation. That's the 15% again. Think about the 85% that's in cash. There is an unbelievable opportunity in the world to get to revenue out of disintermediating cash, which to me is public enemy number one. And I'll, I'll tell you why I say that. People think cash is free. Cash actually costs between 0.5 and 1.5% of GDP for the central bank of a country to print it, to secure it, and to distribute it. This country has a GDP of 15 trillion. 1.5% of 15 trillion is a shitload of money. Yes. 
you could do a lot with that money which we are not doing right so there's that and then if you go past that what's not in that cost is the cost of banks to pick up that cash from the federal reserves vaults and move it around and by the way that all comes in armored trucks with two people and if you ever look at a brinks armored truck that delivers cash to your atms here there's always two guards why are there two because if there's one the damn thing disappears right it's the whole cash is fungible it goes away and gets lost and hidden and then if you go beyond that tax evasion that i talked about you can't evade taxes long term without using cash the us is one of the lowest tax evasion countries in the world and even here the estimate is that 20% of the economy is underground in india it's a blood sport not to pay taxes the only guys who pay taxes are people like us who are salaried and that can't be the right way for india it needs revenue for the government to do real things with infrastructure education healthcare water all the stuff that india needs to have a demographic dividend not a demographic liability which is what it's going to get if it doesn't sort itself out and so when you get past all this nonsense about cash being free then you come to the worst one you guys have studied in a campus in the united states and some of you were undergrads here and no doubt you encountered drugs along the way but guess what they come from certain countries into this country and by the way which of you paid for those with your credit card you pay for them with cash not just you how it comes into the country and how guns go out and they're showing up in mexico and the gang wars all guns manufactured in the us you think they go in exchange for a bank of nova scotia wire transfer so there's a hidden cost that society is bearing for the use of cash for the anonymity that cash provides and i don't think that's the right cost i just think there's a new dialogue to be had about what should be done with cash versus other things so 85% is cash that's the one to go after we don't two or three things one is we created a group inside the company called mastercard labs which is headquartered in dublin has locations in the us and in singapore and brazil now in an effort to get innovation from around the world to flow into what we are doing and these guys are uh, they're actually kept safe from the lunatics who run the asylum inside of mastercard right so so they have a budget that i give them which only i can change my cfo is not allowed to question it nobody in the company can change it it's my budget i give it to them they work with that they have uh, they don't have to give me any spreadsheet for any project because you guys have all worked earlier you can produce a spreadsheet it has 24 sub spreadsheets you change the number on the 23rd one in roll you know 7 <laughs> column 14 and your roe on the first page becomes 35% instead of 3.5% <laughs> i'll never find it i won't know which number you've changed it's a waste of my time so i told them here's the money you choose the projects i need commercially viable two products after two years if i don't i'll fire the whole lot of you and start again <laughs> it works I now have four products in incubation and I was telling the dean three of them by the way are run by women so so much for women cannot succeed in technology that's another bunk that like cash is free that should be dispensed with and three of them are run by women out of the four and they do a great job by the way they're kicking ass on those on what they're doing in the company and that's what I'm trying to do that's part of innovation but the other part of it is it's got to you know seep into your bloodstream it's got to be you got to have an osmosis layer on this and so we're putting money into venture capital firms that show us many more new technology pieces than we ever saw we have uh, people working inside the company on being told that if you try something new and it doesn't work that's fine you can take a risk and you can lose the money and move on and it's a it's the culture you build it's not just creating labs and giving them money it's the culture around it that we're trying to build